Brady Junior High, and for anybody else that wants to try this for fun if they're playing with clay. Uh, I wanted to show you the trick with the cornstarch that I talked about earlier. Again, if you don't have cornstarch, you can use flour. It's just, I think cornstarch is a little finer so that it doesn't make so many different patterns in the surface of your clay. But I want to press a little gear sprocket thing on the bottom of my bowl. And I want that because I know later on when I glaze this, the glaze will seep into any little carving or depression that I make. So the bottom of my bowl will still be smooth, but we'll still see a neat pattern made from whatever is pressed into it. In this case, I'm gonna be using this little guy because he looks cool and I like him. So I'm not putting a ton of this down, but I am sprinkling it all over the bottom because the last thing I wanna do is get that piece stuck in the bottom of my bowl and then when I rip it out, it rips the bottom with it and after all the work we've put into this so far that's the last thing you want to do. So what I'm doing right now spreading this out again take your time and make sure your clay on the bottom or I should say anywhere that you're going to be pressing inside and outside of your piece make sure that it's not too wet. Some of this is still kind of sticky I did take a blow dryer to the inside of this because I didn't want to wait and I wanted to show you guys so the inside looks like that so far. Um, I do have this on a towel just because uh, where I was working, my plywood is getting just a little bit wet and this was starting to stick. So putting the towel under it prevents that from sticking, just like if you were working on a kitchen countertop at home, let's say. So I think I can turn this where you guys can see it. So now that I've got the cornstarch down there, all I'm going to do is take my little gear and make sure it's kind of in the middle of where I want everything. And then I'm just going to kind of Give equal pressure, but then rock it and wiggle it around just a little bit. You don't want to go so hard that you cut all the way through. It's not a cookie cutter. You're just making an indent. So if I like it, I keep it. If not, I line it up. And I push a little bit harder where it was a little shallow. Again, not so hard that you punch right through the bottom because that would be disappointing. And there we go. There is the indent of the little gear. Now, don't worry if you still have cornstarch in there, that's gonna burn out in the kiln. If you do get it wet, it will start to dissipate, but just to show you, it'll start to kind of dissolve. But I don't like doing that because I don't wanna get the clay wetter than it has to be. So just leave the powder in there, it's gonna be fine. If it's really bugging you, don't touch this till it's completely bone dry ready to be fired and then by that time you're done working on this it'll just burn out in the kiln. So that's what I wanted to show you using the trick with cornstarch and again if you don't have cornstarch you can use flour and this is again for anything that you want to make an impression of. Um, I'm going to continue working on this. The main construction like I said before is done. I'm just going to play and see where it takes me. I have my sketch. I've obviously deviated from my sketch a little bit, and you might too, and you know what? That's okay. At least we had an idea to start with. So that's what I'm going to do. So as a side note, guys, as you are working on your pieces, let's say you don't finish this in a day. I don't expect you to. I'm giving you days, weeks to work on this. Take your time. Do a good job, make it something that once we're back in school and you want it fired and glazed, you can use it for years and years to come. So to store your pieces, make sure any scrap clay that you have, store it in that plastic baggie it came in. It'll keep it plenty wet. If you have to drip a little bit of water or spray it with a spray bottle of water, just a little bit to keep it damp, do it. For your piece that you're making, obviously you don't want to cram that in the Ziploc bag I gave you. So instead you might need to uh, put it on a plate and then put a ice cream pail over it or even something like a plastic shopping bag over top of it. And then again, if it is getting too dry, spritz it a little bit, uh, fling a little water in there, and that'll be plenty to keep it just damp when you're putting it away for the day and you might pick it up the next day to continue working on it. One other side note, anything that has clay on it, so let's say you're using a butter knife and you've got clay all over it, 
Make sure you clean most of the clay off before you wash it in the sink or put it in the dishwasher, just like at school. You don't want clay down your plumbing. Plumbing does not like clay. If you're wondering, well, how does Mrs. L do it at home? Well, I have a fancy little trap that I have underneath my sink. It's the same type of trap that dentists use for, I guess, when they have a lot of teeth that they're cleaning throughout the day. So. Uh, I ordered it special. At school we have similar ones, so it protects the plumbing a little bit, but even then you still don't want to have a bunch of clay go down your sink, just because that's, that's bad. Plumbers would not be happy. Okay everybody, we're on the home stretch. So, I have my bowl and it's a little bit stiffer because I did take a blow dryer to it. And I want to put it upside down so I can start constructing a foot, because I don't want any plain foot because I never do anything the easy way, so why not make a complicated foot just because. So I'm going to be constructing it out of more, I think, little ball things and little petal things, and I'm not sure what it's going to tell me to do yet, but I wanted to elevate this up off of the table. So I have a cup that I made that I had in storage, and I'm like, hey, this fits inside here pretty nice. And it will keep the edge of my bowl up off the tabletop so I don't smush all of this stuff because it's stiffer, but this is still wet. And even when it's bone dry, these are so dainty right now, they probably bust right off. So I'm gonna take my cup and put paper towel over it just to cushion it a little bit. And then I am going to carefully Tip it upside down, but try not to push too hard on it because I don't want the ridge of the cup to leave an indent on the inside of my bowl. This is just to hold it for me so I can work on it. So that's what I'm going to start now on the home stretch here is clean this up, make it look pretty, and make some sort of foot. Your design may or may not require a foot, but either way you want to make sure that your bottom is at least smooth. So even if that means you take just a little bit of water on your finger, and just light pressure, take and smooth that away, you can do that. Remember, if it's still shiny, that means you have to work the water into the surface more. Leaving water on the surface of your clay does you no good. So you gotta work it in and smooth out the cracks, smooth out any texture that you might have. In this case, it was from my towel that I had. So after you smooth out your bottom, I want you to write your name on the bottom. So take a pencil, write your name, and then write 2020, because it's a good timeline to show you what did I make back in 2020 versus what you might make in 2024, let's say. Okay, so that's what I'm going to start on. This is pretty much the last step. I'm going to make a foot and then pretty it up, fix any cracks that might be appearing, and finish it up. Alrighty, junior high. So here is your finished product of a lap joint hand built bowl with lots of goofy additives and embellishments. I notice in a lot of my work lately, I have a lot of nature inspired elements. I don't know if it's because it's springtime and I'm happy it's finally warm and we can go outside and not freeze or what it is, but I'm not saying that for your theme or for your designs you have to have nature inspired. You could go into, if you've got a workshop at home, whether it's metalworking or woodworking or autos or fixing tractors, maybe you've got some gears you could push into your clay or uh, sometimes washers and uh, the heads from some nuts and bolts seem to work out really well too if you want a more industrial feel. I just wanted to let you see the finished product. I'm going to pick it up. This is what the underside looks like. It's a little on the fragile side yet because I just finished it and it will need some time to dry before I put it in the kiln. But I just wanted to show you some of the cool things 
going on here, and I have some imperfections. I've got some finger marks, and I have to put my name on the bottom yet, whoopsie. But this just gives you an idea of how decorative you can become with your functional sculpture. Give this a whirl, guys. See if you like it. I do have a lot of clay left over. I guarantee this bowl is not four pounds. So if you're like me and you have leftover clay, play with it. Have fun with it. If you want to make more than one clay project, more than one functional sculpture, show me your best one for a grade. You could make a whole series if you want. Um, if clay isn't really your thing and you do not want to do clay again, which is understandable, it's not for everybody, but at least I give you credit for trying. Uh, then just uh, kind of knead up the leftover clay that you have and get it a little wet and put it back in your Ziploc bag and when you're back at school next you can drop it off and we'll add it to the rest. Uh, you can also bring your finished functional sculpture piece to the school uh, whenever they might have it open again, that I'm not sure on yet. And then we can fire this and you can glaze it and then you can have this as something awesome that you can keep forever and ever. So, good job guys, have fun with this, okay, bye! I guess I kind of have a thing for petals and leaves, because that's what I find myself keep adding. <laughs>